for indigenous languages, I would like people to understand that languages are part of a people's identity. Yeah. And it's sacred, in my opinion, which means the extra effort to learn and to properly deliver on a native language is necessary. It is history, mm. it is generations, it is a whole thousands and most likely millions of people's identity. Hi, and welcome to the Everything Voice of Us podcast. I'm T-Code, an African voiceover talent from Nigeria, and this is my podcast, where I take on voiceover topics from an African perspective. On this episode, my guest is Blessing Kure, a trilingual multimedia personality, voice artist and storyteller from the northern part of Nigeria, and she lets us into a world of voice acting, from wanting to be a pilot as a child to becoming one of the most sought-after Nigerian female storytellers. Sit back and enjoy this episode. Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the Everything Voice of a Podcast. I'm T-Code and as always, I bring you interesting conversations about voiceovers from the African perspective. And joining me today is a versatile and trilingual media personality, voice artist and storyteller. She does voiceovers in English, Hausa, Pidgin, and has done voice works for organizations like WHO, UK government, Adidas, Cartoon Network, Johnny Walker, the United Nations, just to name a few. Now, it's also worth mentioning that uh, she was a judge for Rockefeller Foundation's Youth Voice Awards and has been involved in several female advocacy and tourism movements. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you none other than Blessing Kure. Blessing, it's a delight to have you on this podcast. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Great. I've been, I've been, I've been hoping to have you on this pod for a while now. In fact, just to have us talk about voiceovers and uh, talk about the industry, talk about the business, and a whole lot of things like that. So uh, it's well, it's here a we are to today. <laughs> thank you. We're here already today. <laughs> Okay, let me start from your name. Um, I remember chatting you up and using the spelling B-L-E-S-S-I-N-G. And then you mm -hmm. said it is supposed to be B-L-E-S-S-Y-N. So it got me thinking, yeah. is is yeah, is yeah. the second spelling your actual name spelling or sort of like a nickname type of spelling? <laughs> So I'm a firm believer in answering only what I call myself, right? Mm, so yeah. as a brand, as a media person, I have mm. decided that my creative name will be Blessing Kure with a YN. Now, mm. of course, my government name is an ING, but I choose on across all boards, literally, you would almost not see traces of an, mm -hmm. a Blessing ING Kure relating to me on the internet anymore. <laughs> so yeah. it is how I choose to identify for my creative bits. And I believe that we all have parts of our beings and existence that we decide to pull forward. And for my creativity, I would rather be mm. called Blessing Career with a YN. Interesting. I see that you, you're you very particular and intentional about your branding. I've, I've seen you on uh, different platforms, pay to play platforms, your website, your everywhere you're intentional and that's really cool it shows how much of a media person that you are but talking about being a media person was that what was the idea of what you wanted to be like when you grow up uh say did you think you were going to be a voiceover artist was that a dream or was it to be <laughs> uh or was it to be um a radio personality or you know what, what was it like for you growing up uh, growing up was very interesting. I would say I lived my childhood to the fullest. I believe in living every stage to the fullest. I mean, then I didn't know that was what it was, but I was living my best life. <laughs> so oh, wow. um, as a child, I wanted to be a pilot and I was going to eventually study aeronautic engineering. And then I ended up studying um, quantity surveying. I love, I love buildings. I love structures. I love architecture. I studied quantity surveying. So I am currently um that's my field by education and mm -hmm. i have a master's in the pipes for that i mm. however media found me 
and I started work at a radio station. Did news, I've done reporting, I've done presenting. Um, I do spoken word poetry writing and then the voicing, and that kind of just found me. Hmm. I I know it may not make much sense to anyone, but there 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 are things that find you. You don't go looking yeah, for them. Yeah. Yeah, I so agree. This is I one of those you. things for me. Because, I mean, voiceover 10, 15, 20 years ago, voiceover wasn't something I said, maybe you know, you're not to be a voice actor. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, it wasn't um, a thing it's like more that. popular. It's more popular mm-hmm. now and it's more mm-hmm. widely acceptable. Um, however, that was, that was no, I didn't think I was going to get paid to talk. And by the way, are you practicing what you studied? Yeah. Oh, nice. Interesting. Passively. passively. Okay, but you're um, falling in love with voiceovers. I am a media Me- person, so not voiceovers mm. only. I'm a media person. Mm. And as I said, there are many sides to a person and who is yeah. to pick and choose? Why must we yeah. pick and choose? But then you've, you've, you've done so well to, you know, um, set yourself up in that voiceover space and... I'm also very interested in understanding those things that influenced you. So, and I know you do Hausa voiceovers and uh, Pigeon mm-hmm. as well. So I'm wondering mm-hmm. what was growing up like for you. Let's start with growing up in Nigeria. Which city did you grow up and what was that childhood experience for you? And tell us how then it graduated to you understanding there is something called voiceovers. Or even when you didn't understand voiceovers, but you probably heard it on radio and something like that. Was it something okay. you'd do, like play with, or you know, just something there and somebody found you, like you said? I was I was a very curious child. I am a very curious person. So mm. I asked a lot of questions. I asked a and there was no Google. Shout out to my parents for doing an amazing job back in the day. Um there was wow. no Google. So if I asked questions, I mean sometimes they would have to read it up because there was no Google. So um, I was very curious and I was interested. I had, I mean, I loved to travel till date. I think right from time, I would always say my hobby is traveling. And till date, I was just fascinated with culture, with how people behaved, with how people's experiences. So I had a very culturally enriched um, childhood, which was like I had influences from a lot of tribes and not just saying oh growing up in the north i traveled i solo traveled to the to southeast when i, I think i was nine because I, I just saw it on tv and i'm like this would be a nice place to go my parents are like okay you wow. could do that <laughs> so i did wow. have a lot of um experience with culture and a lot of appreci- i do have a lot of appreciation for culture i speak hausa i speak pigeon speak yoruba i learned um Igbo. i speak passive wow. because i used to live in the east so I pick languages mm-hmm. like really fast. And for projects, I think I've learned Arabic for a bit. I've sp- spoken tree. I learned languages fast. And so um, I didn't know it was going to be voiceover. I knew I wanted to be in a space that fully encompasses these things. And I think that's the good thing. Voiceover does encompass every part of your experience mm-hmm. as a person. Say mm-hmm. even if you, I do documentary narration uh, quite often. Mm-hmm. These are things I could relate to. Say if I'm doing commercials, these are things I could relate to. Um, so there are a lot of things that you begin to see your day to day living in the career, and it's just very ever changing. It's nice. It's fun. By the way, <laughs> yeah, it, it is actually. And you you come to me at like um, I see that you have different experiences of culture put together. And that is, that's a mm-hmm. good thing to have as a voice talent. You, you, those experiences, they help you put characters in motion. And become, and, yes, um, become different people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can act as an house person. And you're, just, you're not just acting the role, but you know how they think. And you know how the other people that you probably would play their um, role think. And that's a great thing, you know. Oh, okay. I, mean, I believe so, so... travel is very good education. Sorry for cutting you. I believe travel is very good education. Yeah. And it yeah. gives you the best form of education, cultural appreciation. And then you just learn things. Because you can pick it, you can pick how someone talks, let's say, from the motor park, and you just put in a character mm-hmm. and they're like, This is amazing. Exactly. 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 <laughs> I give a silent that, shout the... out to the person. 
<laughs> so many shout out to the people that we've stolen their characters maybe the the market more like men. being inspired by being inspired by them. yeah that's the word that's the word mm-hmm. <laughs> fantastic and 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 for the record i know you traveled a lot but what part of the north kaduna ah oh, i see among other fantastic. places well let's say mm, kaduna, yeah <laughs> great great now, now we're talking about voiceovers and you talked about mm-hmm. traveling and all of that as at the time that you decided oh oh yes you said voiceovers found you but was there a conscious effort to learn voiceovers did you sign up for any training did you do your research on the internet and just build up on that what was that learning experience for you like for voiceovers i would always say voiceovers is beyond having a good voice and that's the mistake. Mm-hmm. I mean, your voice is nice. Yes. So is the voice of a million other people. It's not just talking. Mm. It's the whole craft. It's the whole art. Just like how you would go and master your skills in, say, being um, studying medicine or um, engineering, you have to also hone these skills. So when I found, when VoiceOver found me, and then I, um, I was in Hot FM actively, I had been doing VoiceOvers for a very long time. But I didn't know it On was radio. a thing. It was, yes, mm. I didn't know it was, it was just part of a day's work. I didn't know it was an establishment that could, mm-hmm. I, mean, an industry. I didn't know it could be a full-time thing. I didn't know it was an industry, mm. thank you. So when I did start to discover that, okay, I was getting called to do a lot more work. And then I had traveled and I think I met a producer that used to produce voiceovers in Lagos. I was like, okay, you're, you're really good. You're almost a natural. Did you train at this? I'm just like, oh no, not really. I said, okay, so we, we worked together for a period of time mm. and it was pointers and I could see the trajectory of the improvements my voice had made within such a short period of time. But then there is very little access people have, and I'm saying people, myself included, to trainings. Mm. I mean, especially years as and years Africans. Ago, as Africans, as Nigerians, and then it's, but mm-hmm. well, the internet is a good place. God mm-hmm. bless the University of YouTube. So it was. <laughs> yeah. It was hours and hours and hours of consuming content, of learning, of fine tuning, of finding what fits you. A lot of times I see people say, oh, I'm trying to get a mentor. Can you teach me? I want, I'm like, no, I'm going to point you in the direction of, however, I may not be able to give you, hold your hand and walk. But no, 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 no. You must hold my hand. If you're not holding my hand and walking, it's not going to work. That's not true. Mm. guess what mm. a lot of the people that are breaking boundaries had no formal voiceover education it's mm. growth we don't have a voiceover university it's growth mm. it's training it's wanting to do better and having that desire to be the better or the best version of yourself which is something i i try to do daily in whatever niche so as a media personality as a voice artist as, as a person that advocates for stuff i still ensure that i am the best version myself of you you know it's a it, it's an interesting perspective that you bring into the conversation talking about how you know not many of the big top guns in voiceovers had what we can call a formal training into that craft uh, and and i and i see what you're saying in terms of because I, I've, I've i've interacted with a lot of voice talent and i realized that just attending a training is not enough. If you don't have that fire burning in you before you came, you're still going to remain, you might remain the same way. So for those people that still um, become a big deal after attending such trainings, it's not, yeah, the training played a part, but they have also been invested in that craft. And they just, the training was just a means to an end. It was just something to help them actualize more or better what they you know they were aspiring to become so so you have a point i mean an analogy an analogy we could use is like the trainings are like holding a lamp on a path and you're walking right someone else can hold the lamp for you but you have to make the steps you have to move you have to be the one to still keep checking and fine-tuning it Mm. even if you're paying or you have a full-time coach you will still being a voiceover talent means you're you know negotiations it means yeah. you 
are good with people skills it means you could have basic content creation it means audio production it means it means a lot of things it means so a there's lot only, you, you, there's yeah. only so much a person can give you that will last you for the rest of your career yeah yeah and you mentioned it, things like audio production the business part of it um the branding and all of that wow that's a lot to talk that's a lot that's that's a whole different aspect to it that people don't realize they just think it's about having a great voice um and and talking about that as well that takes me back to when you talked about working on radio and at that point you were doing voiceovers but you never knew it was an industry uh i i was also in that space i i worked on radio for years and i didn't know as well or should i say it wasn't a big deal it's not like so you you're an oap for instance somebody's going to pay you some chicken change to voice something but you won't know the value or many many oaps don't know the value of what they're doing you know because they don't value it actually until until they they get exposed to the industry and they realize which is Ooh. why they say knowledge is power yeah knowledge is power so it's 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 quite interesting and I'm happy we're having this kind of conversation a lot of people need to be educated about the voice of our industry and see what it is for what it is now let's talk about your creative process um so someone gets you a gig and says we want you to do this voice over for us you how does it work for you from the um negotiations to get into the studio and and you're going to tell us also how you produce i mean your your production process or just your voicing process do you work with a producer do you do it yourself and yeah just a general feel of what your production and your creative process is like i think that this was a very loaded question so if at any point i forget <laughs> to um, answer any i think it would be <laughs> nice for you to draw my attention to it so let me just start with what i remember. definitely I, I, trust me i'll do that <laughs> my creative process is um so i book a i book a project and they send the script of course by booking a project i'm saying maybe negotiations are done or i mean if you contact me the negotiation process da, 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 and then we understand it's important that i ask questions I think a lot of times, especially people starting out are scared to ask questions because they feel like they'll irritate mm. the client. But questions mm. help you have a clearer view. Now, the questions sometimes even preferably for me come before we even negotiate because mm -hmm. I want a one minute voiceover and me saying, give me this. It's different mm. then later telling me, I want a one minute voiceover in how so many you translate it and I need it in 30 minutes, meaning you have to do it immediately. And mm. I need you to put music. Can you see how the, the, the cost is changing? Yeah. So yeah. for me, those conversations and those inquiries, of course, they're pretty standard. And I have that conversation. Was that settled? Um, it depends on the timing. So voiceovers are always needed like yesterday. It's always, I need it yesterday. I need it. I need it. No, 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 no. It's a very funny thing. But I think any art artist can relate. So um, yeah. I get that done. It depends on the duration of this project. For short-term projects, if you get that done, if it's a live director session, depending on the platform they choose, we sort the time and the date and a lot of back and forth and professionalism because, I mean, it helps. And then um, going to the studio, I do have a studio. I do have producers that work um, with me or for me. With uh, you. But mm. with, yes, yeah, so I do work, um, have producers that work with me but I do my own production. So mm. I do my own production as well. So it depends on the workload. It depends on the theme of the entire project and um, what we uh, we have on our desk at the moment. So that's done. I get it to the clients. They have feedbacks. They write them down. They articulate it properly. I would I'd always like ask questions, specific questions, because revisions mm. are not meant to be it's not that you say, oh, because this line, I don't like it. Okay, I'm changing half of the script. That's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's going to cost you. You're not going to just be changing yeah. the script. Finalize before you get yeah. to me. Thank you. Right? So that's going to cost <laughs> you. So you have to establish this. what, um, what is your correction. Oh, did you know like how you started this, 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 this? Again, sorry, towards the beginning, after the negotiation, you ask for creative direction. How do you want me to sound? Who do you mm -hmm. want me to become? Because most yeah. times people have an exact picture of what maybe your sample or somebody else's sample 
Yeah. That they want yeah. you to be. So it's best if they give you a sample and you know that, oh, they want me to sound like T code. So I would mm. see what T code sounds like on the project that relates the best to it. A lot of research is going to help you in this whole career because you can't go and I mean, certain brands have brand identities and then you just go because you didn't research them, the brand, mm. the topic, the, you just go and do what you're doing. It comes off mm. a bit tacky and, and sometimes somewhat offensive. Yeah, so yeah. you could do, you do that, you do the research and then um, I do the recording and when they say, oh, the revision, mostly outline it, encourage them to outline it. Uh, for those that don't like to type, you can say, oh, they don't send a voice note, that's fine send an explain, explain your points. And when they do that, we revise, we get it back to you. Um, if there's, I mean, mostly it depends on what you're paying for. So, so standard, mm -hmm. it could be like two, you could say two revisions, you could say one revision, but you can't be revising till the end of the world. So at some point yeah. when the revisions, just like specify, it has to be very clear. What do you mean? So, mm -hmm. You, when you deliver that and then they start to say, oh, I don't like this, changing exactly what they had said they needed, that's not on you. So at some point in the mm -hmm. dynamics, it may have to then be extra charge. I don't know. Situations yeah. call yeah. for different things, right? So um, yeah. that's pretty much yeah. it. Invoice. Yeah. Oh, I forgot it, invoice. Invoice. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Invoice. Smiling to the bank. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. For, for me, though, um, I let it. I let. I let them know that uh, if the error comes from me in the revision process, you know, there probably I could revise it for you, um, charge free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, terms but and when conditions comes, are very important. Exactly, terms and conditions, and and I include that in my invoice too. You know, just so That's we okay. we have that. Yeah, um, we're on and. The same uh, page. <laughs> exactly, and then there's something you mentioned about research and asking questions. I think. Those two things are very important. I've fallen the victim of, um, so I get this job and uh, I didn't ask enough questions, right? And I already told them this is how much um, I'll be charging for the job. And I, after the negotiation was done, I get the script and the brand was some huge brand I wasn't expecting. And I felt like, oh my. Oh my. You, you just sit and think about your whole life. It's like I'm God. telling you, no. I'm and I'm, I was, I oh geez, I had I sent the person a voice note to be very honest, but then I did the job because I I, I already gave my word. And most but, times hmm. for big clients, they wouldn't want to. So it is like um, exclusivity, especially if they are middle agents. They wouldn't really yeah. relinqu relinquish the name because they know that's going to affect the pricing. Yeah. which is why it helps to have a more stable pricing system and then you can then decide say okay send me the script where you check and you're sure that it's not some big shot you could just say okay because now you yeah <laughs> that, that, that that's a good tip send me the scripts so when you see the script and then you can <laughs> yeah and of course when you receiving the script you know that there's a whole non-disclosure agreement there because yeah privacy and stuff yeah yeah that is very important i i, I think that um when we we, I know that the industry is getting closer to um, standardizing. Uh, in terms of pricing now, we rates, there are a couple of rates cards out there, but there aren't, um, it's not like an industry thing because this person is going to charge you this, that person is going to charge you. And I, I do understand the complexity that comes with, oh, some persons are like top dogs, so they deserve to be paid some high value prize. But then, you know, we're still working towards it as an industry. And I know that um, it'll get to that point where you people have a sense of this is what a one minute commercial is worth. Because so, if you ask, yeah, go on, please. The, I think this problem is predominantly Nigerian for the Nigerian mm. markets because South Africa has yeah. the South African, I think, voice association. I can't remember what the acronym is, but they have a yeah. whole rate sheet that is very, very detailed. Terms and conditions, yeah. I think it's almost 10 to 20 pages. Um, terms and mm. conditions, there are, um, if this happens, this happens. I mean, down to the nitty gritty of if I audition charges to audition, you're mm. supposed to be paid. So down to these yeah. little union um, arrangements. So but I think we're yet to get to that point as the Nigerian. Um, as the Nigerian yeah. Um, 
and the, the the thing is, we do actually have um, a rate card. We have an association. That's the Association of Voice of Actors in Nigeria. That's Avoa. Um, mm-hmm. But then it's it, it, the I think the information is not really out there. And to be honest, I also think the rates they need to be reviewed. And I'm aware that um, Avoa is working on these things. So uh, fingers crossed, a lot of changes will be happening. Um, sooner than we expect. All right. So uh, let's talk crossed. about, yeah, fingers crossed. Let's talk about um, the type of voiceovers that you do. You do Hausa language, indigenous languages like Hausa, Pidgin, and all of that. Now, people pay attention mostly to English. The attention that we give to indigenous languages, and what I'm trying to say is you find more people doing voiceovers in English than you find them doing in, um, say, Yoruba, Hausa, and different languages, particularly in Nigeria. Now, you've been able to build something around Hausa language voiceovers. I remember there was a job that uh, I was talking about with a producer, and then we had to do the Hausa version. And your name came straight up, you know, and I was like, this is amazing. But I'm curious to know how you build confidence to say, oh, I'm not just going to do English. I'm going to do Hausa. I'm going to do Pidgin. Is it that you're so good with the language or you decided to learn to do voiceovers in that language and make it a thing of for yourself? Yeah. Voiceover is much like any other product or service. It's governed by the principle of demand and supply. Now, you mm. mentioned English voiceovers being predominant because there are more English speaking people in Nigeria. It's a unifying language. So unless there is a particular campaign that is tailored towards the North or the West or for the Mm. East, it will be speaking Igbo. So that is then when you need those artists. But what is the average commercial value? Will you be in Sekatina and be trying to Mm. run an Igbo ad? Do you understand? Yeah, exactly. I can't even say Lagos because Lagos is in, like a cultural melting pot. Everybody's in Lagos. So that, that would make sense. Yeah. So it's like saying, would you now go to um, uh, Abia and be running a strictly Hausa campaign? Mm. There are a lot of, I mean, because by virtue of the commercialization of the space, um, there are a lot of houses there, but it's, it's the demand. What is the demand mm. on ground? And that leads me to my second talking point, which is the westernization and the very disturbing fading away of indigenous languages. There are statistics there are, that show that in saying the next 50 years, a lot of languages will be extinct. Hmm. These are predominant now. We're speaking English, Hausa, Pidgin, Yoruba, yeah. and Igbo. And Fulani, those are regarded as the predominantly popular languages in Nigeria. But Nigeria yes. has well over 600 languages. Hmm. And if you are a minority tribe in Nigeria, you'll, you'll understand what this concern is. Because if they're running an ad in, say, um, uh, Gombe, right? It's most hmm. likely going to be, yeah. ah, let's do a, a Hausa ad. But there's a Tangali person hmm. there. Will there be a Tangali ad for them? If you're hmm. running an ad in Kogi, and there's somebody from Dais Yagba, will you then say, hmm. ah, Instead of doing specific general Yoruba as that everybody can hear, let's speak Okun. Hmm. No. Owere. Have the, there's Owere. There's Igbo, then there's Owere. It's a separate language. People don't know that. Yeah. Would you then say, let's do that version and then take it to another Eastern state? No. Hmm. So just like any product, it's demand and supply. And there's supply. demand of English. There's demand of English speaking descent. There's even more demand of transatlantic and British and American. So you see more voice artists doing English, British, and American. And also the in- influences where product of our society, where product of what we conge- ingest. A lot of the materials out there have more neutral accents. So the older, say, older generations of voice artists are able to do more heavier what is considered African accent. But it's mm. when when the newer generation there's yeah. a bit of a struggle to some extent now i'm not i'm not drawing the line i'm not making conclusions from the from what i've mm. observed there's a bit of a struggle yeah. accessing that 
and that's not a problem that's not their fault that's not i'm not saying that's a problem that's just saying this is how we speak now if need be i could switch to a house character i could switch to this but this is how i talk on a normal day this yeah. is no tongue twisting tongue tying mouth turning yeah. but if i need to speak yeah. pigeon obviously all this goes away hmm you so know, it is it is yeah. demand it is supply it is westernization it is tribes tribes um um more like decentralization of um, tribes and settlements and just more westernization more urbanization as well because there's a lot of yeah. migration here these people from here are jumping here like that like that yeah so it's just yeah. oh what does everybody speak it's more economic to run a nationwide english campaign than to start looking yeah. for everybody's yeah. village language hmm so that's wow, that, that that's that's interesting. And your answer brought me thinking about um, the different types of accents. Even when we talk English now, the different types of English accents that exist in Nigeria. And you know, when you're talking about the fact that other tribes, you know, th those languages are they are fading in terms of relevance and how the 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 demand is for them. Now, I, I was just I was just wondering. Even our accent, it's more like as generations come, the accents also change because mm -hmm. these kids are getting exposed to a lot of foreign content. I we have a lot of children that would grow up on um what's this popular a uh, baby shark type of cartoons and stuff like that. And oh, then you I listen to the shark. way <laughs> yeah, and you listen to the way the kid they talk. This new generation of um africans nigerians in particular young ones that i've seen they talk with so much um fluency the the, the diction the phonetics is all cool and all of that and so i'm just saying that in the next 20 years or 30 years they they will become the voice actors then and i'm wondering what our nation our community would be like in terms of accent you know it's just, just a thought anyway let's talk about Yes, your venture in Hausa still, we haven't left that. I haven't done Hausa voiceovers and Pigeon voiceovers for a while. Those are the types of voiceovers that I'm, I'll consider to be indigenous language voiceovers. For people that want to venture in this um, categories of voiceovers in the nearest future, the younger ones, what would you tell them to pay attention to? Okay. Language. There are a host of things that... Um, should be paid attention to. Aside quality, obviously, that goes for both English, Pidgin, and Hausa, and all other languages and general voiceover career. But for indigenous languages, I would like people to understand that languages are part of a people's identity. Yeah. And it's sacred, in my opinion, which means the extra effort to learn and to properly deliver on a native language is necessary it is history mm. it is generations it is a whole thousands and most likely millions of people's identity so mm. this means if i get a job to voice something in a language i don't speak it will be honorable to at least learn the best version of how mm. to speak that language indigenously speak it correctly represent it properly because again, a voicing is supposed to convey and bridge the gap between, say, the brand or the organization and the people they're getting to. But if the people can't find that connection, it's just going to be, this is just rude. Hmm. So this means if I'm trying to do a Hausa or Yoruba or a Pigeon voiceover and I see a word I'm not very certain about, confirm it. Languages hmm. are not. I mean, English is difficult. If you meet people that study English and literature, you would, they have tales to tell. English mm. is difficult to study. But you see indigenous languages, I can think off the top of my head, I can think of six meanings of ah, of, of how to say ah, and it means different. There's ah, there's ah, ah, there's a, mm -hmm. like, it's the <laughs> same word. Aha. Uh -huh. In Hausa, I mean, in Hausa, not oh. so in <laughs> So it is the same one. It is the same okay. word. It is different meaning. It varies from, say, um, the, the, let's not get into the history of it, but it varies from region to region, how languages are spoken. 
Now, I don't just people are like, oh, you speak Hausa so well. I read Hausa books as well. I study mm. on this office. You have to, it's the, the real, like, as native as it goes. It's confirming mm. the pronunciations. It's confirming the meanings. It's confirming, is this the authentic way to pronounce it? Does this fully represent the average Hausa person? Does this fully represent what the language is? Not just, oh, let me just cut out and be going. I don't really don't care about this language. I do care about languages. I may not mm. be Hausa, a maybe Hausa person, but you learn, mm. learn to speak it. If you need to speak Pidgin, it's not that you will now start doing the Pidgin voiceover and say, what you do? It has to be. <laughs> Put some wafi into it. Yeah. Put some energy. Put your back into it. Learn it. Digest it. Speak it. Be it. Mm. that's just the that's the best that's the most respectable and honorable to, thing to do to your language because language is our identity i know there's a lot of oh uh, it's nigeria in nigeria yes i mean we're together now so get over it <laughs> it represents <laughs> us as a yeah. people so represent this how i would rather pass up on say oh this opportunity than just botch a person's native language that's yeah. not fair well said well said i agree with you 100 percent. now let's talk about your venture into the uh pay to play sites i remember a few years ago i was trying to set up my pay to play accounts and i find you in a couple of them and it's not just me finding you there but you sort of you're able to you know position yourself quite all right you have good ratings, the branding is on point and all of that. Tell me about your venture into pay to play sites. What's been that experience like? Has it been a very good, friendly one? Are there things that you regret about it? Or you know, let's talk about that. Uh, it's It's been a very friendly, enjoyable experience. It's, hmm. It offers flexibility. But as I say, freelancing is not as flexible as people think. Because many, okay. I mean, I've had to answer a couple of times. I want to control my time. I don't want anybody to be the boss of me. Well, guess what freelancing yeah. does for you? Guess what working for yourself does for you? It gives you more than one boss a month. It means if I yeah. work on 20 projects in a month, I have 20 bosses in a month. Different mm. temperaments, different communication, most likely different time zones, different needs. So it's not as, um, it's not as freeing. I mean, you get to say, oh, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. And I want it, but it's yeah. not as liberating as we as as it's advertised to be. It's quite it's about work. It's work. Work mm. is always going to be work. So yeah, I've had a very enjoyable experience working on page play sites. And I well, you said the branding is uniform, and well, you've spoken on that already. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say on that. No, you 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 have a very nice branding, really. Thank uh, you. Thank you. You don't just use pictures, you use videos as well. I remember I, there's one that that just lives rent free in my head. You're I think you're in front of a door and you're talking and you're saying some things about, you know, so I found that to be very interesting. It makes you unforgettable. Yeah. So even Your the branding clients, should so. always be a best representation. It should mm -hmm. always be you putting forward the best version of yourself. And not just the best version, the best and authentic version. I'm all for putting together your truest self. Hmm. So there is no version of me that is online that is not the true version of me. Of you. And people can wow. tell through fallacy. Clients can sense your falsehood if you're being just phony. <laughs> mm. So be I the see. most authentic version of yourself. Honest I agree. version of yourself. I agree. I agree. Let's talk about uh, voiceover genres that you do. Which are your top three voiceover genres? By the ones I get booked for or by the ones I enjoy doing? Okay, so answer both questions now. <laughs> the ones you get booked <laughs> for and the ones you love doing. Uh, I do a lot of narrations. So narration cuts across uh, documentaries, e-learning, trailers. On videos, um, audiobooks, narration generally. I do yeah. love storytelling a lot. Mm. So somehow that gravitates towards me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and 
I do animation and character voicing. I also do and enjoy commercial voicing. I mean, commercial is always regarded as the bread and butter of voiceovers because you don't break so much mm. back and it's just mm-hmm. short, sweet and nice, smiling to the back. Yeah. Yeah. Great. How about um, the ones you love to do? I, I think you just answered the ones that comes to you the most, right? No, I answered. You said I should join the two. I tried to two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually meant... Um, I know they're the top three that you love, but then when you included mm-hmm. the ones that you get booked for the most, I was wondering. So are they oh, the ones? Oh, okay. Get so I love narration. I said I love storytelling. So I love narration because I love storytelling. I love to tell stories. Yeah. And it's just enjoyable um, being able to stir up emotions, being able to create a world that's not there for just like in the person's mind is fascinating. Um, I also do commercials. I, I enjoy doing commercials and ads and character voicing is almost like everybody's like I want to join my voice so <laughs> <laughs> character voicing and animation that's like basically pretty much the same thing it's always very nice it's like oh my god am I many people okay. in one <laughs> okay <laughs> so, but what are your uh, most challenging genres that you've ever attempted hmm most challenging i think every genre can be challenging you know hmm. okay but i would say audiobooks now the thing with audiobooks are is the fact that it's not a sprint it's a marathon so it's yeah. not how fast it's how long mm. can you span for because how you sound on page one mm. you're going to need to sound on page 350 or page mm. 1000 mm. you can't decide that I woke up very tired. My voice has changed. No, it did not change. Because that's just going to confuse <laughs> the listener. And in the audience, for maximum results, it depends on the type of books you're narrating. If it's books that have numerous characters, you mustn't change your voice. I mean, I enjoy doing that, but you mustn't do that. However, it gives you have to have a distinct um, way to enable the listener to know that, ah, Tico is talking, Lagbaja is talking now. It's blessing. Yeah. Ah, it's Korean. Yeah. Without having to go to the text and be like, who's talking now? It's just me. So <laughs> sometimes that can be very strenuous on your, your vocal cord, which is where exercise yeah. and warm-ups and living and eating healthy comes in. Um, yeah. That's where it comes in. I agree. I think audiobooks, I agree. audiobooks are, are a lot. And co- character voicing mm. is also sometimes very, goes from very short to very, very lengthy. So yeah, in the same group chat, both of mm. them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, commercial left the group. <laughs> no, commercial is all right. the um, I like commercials too. I don't know. Everybody kind of likes commercials. Don't we all? So what? <laughs> yes, we do. When you're not voicing, what do you do for fun? When you're not voice acting? I travel. I sleep. Okay. I, I know this sounds very funny for I see. <laughs> mm. I used to enjoy the okay. and um, cartoons. I watch lots of cartoons. However, oh, no. because I voice characters, I start to just, it just ruins it. <laughs> so, okay. um, yeah, because it's almost like your brain is subconsciously working and analyzing the voices and picking up things. And yeah, so when I'm, when I'm not working, I enjoy, to tra- enjoy traveling. And I do put up travel content, travel vlogs. I do document my travel. I mean, I travel way before I was there to do um, travel documenting on my um, platforms. But it's always something nice to do. I enjoy it. Yeah. Interesting. Do you have any advice to upcoming voice actors? What would you advise them? Keep moving. Keep improving. Mm. Keep growing take up space and be very shameless with your marketing. Not shameless now in a very shameless way. Shameless and be fearless. As I said, take up space. Mm. Keep on keeping on. Like put it, oh, I do voiceovers. It's word of mouth. It's putting it on the internet. It is at every point you have to sell yourself. You're you're a walking Mm. pitch. It's like you have to have your pitch deck in your mind. You're, someone just says, oh, hi, I did, I did, I just in a conversation, just feel free to throw it in there. 
I mean, don't be obnoxious with it, but just <laughs> learn the tactics. So just put it in there in case you know anybody that mm-hmm. does. And most times, somebody always knows somebody that needs voiceovers. And words of mouth, word mm. of mouth and referrals, in-person referrals, um, are very, very uh, have proven to be more fruitful. And this is why influencer marketing works. Because mm. if a person is vouching for this particular product, it means subconsciously there's yeah. a there's a there's a type of connection to I trust that blessing doesn't um wouldn't put something out or endorse something that's trash. I could get it because yeah. blessing said it's okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's so I'm just saying keep moving, put yourself out there as much as you can, improve and keep growing. Honestly, the learning doesn't end. We still pay for classes, we still learn, we still watch it, we still do trainings, we still have bad recording days. Still yeah. Voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we keep on keeping. That's the word. Well, it's been a fantastic time with you, Blessing. And um, Thank you. I look forward to another time like this, you know, when we get to talk about voiceovers, voice acting, and uh, we keep moving and keep growing. We could end it here, but is there another thing you want us to know before the end of this session, this recording? Uh what would I want you to know? For for more details, you could visit my website. For more details, okay. or if you want if you want to check out my work and uh, just basically the things I represent, you could check out my website. It's blessingcourier.com, B-L-E-S-S-Y-N.com. If you would if you have inquiries, social media is still the same blessing courier with the Y N. And um, you can write me. That's almost like the fastest way to reach me. So contact at blessingcourier.com. Um and oh, check out my travel channel. <laughs> <laughs> On YouTube, I, I believe. Yes, it is. There. What's the title Blessing of your... Blessing <laughs> Great. Um, you're, you earned yourself <laughs> hundreds of subscribers already, if not thousands, as much as people would listen to this podcast. <laughs> that would be great. Thanks very thanks great. Good for having me. You're you're welcome. And uh, the pleasure is mine. The honor is mine. Thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. And I can't wait to, you know, see you doing bigger things in your space. It's been a pleasure. Uh, me and Jesu. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for today. And um, we will meet in another episode. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe, leave a comment and tell someone about it. Follow the podcast on everything videos on all social media platforms. Thanks for listening and see you on the next episode.